Right, hello guys, welcome to a stream of some rated games between some of China and Czech Republic's best players, played just a few days ago on Vubli. Um, this is going to be something of a test stream for me because I've actually changed up my stream settings from the def from the ones that you've seen me using uh, over the past months really, ever since I started streaming on Vubli Official. Um, something you might notice is that the resolution has decreased slightly um, the reason behind this is that by decreasing the resolution it allows me to free up some CPU resources to uh, direct towards some special settings that hopefully will um, result in uh, more or less completely eliminating the blur that you usually see when the screen is scrolling around um, that's present in a lot of AOC stream streaming um, but Jeanette has been working her way on some custom settings which kind of reduce that um, and this is my first time testing uh, settings aimed at doing that in a live scenario. I've tried it offline, it seems to go pretty well, but this is going to be something of a live stress test, if you will. So, um, what better to, to do that with some recorded games? That way there's no live action, live tournament action that you're missing out on while, if, if the test goes wrong. Um, so we've got some good games here played between uh, China and CZ. Um, we've seen recently that the Chinese have been undertaking some paid, uh, or not so much paid, prize money tournaments versus other, nation other strong national teams like Brazil and Finland and also uh, I heard Vietnam, although I've not seen those wrecks come out yet, so whether they that actually happened or not, I'm not quite sure. Um, this, however, is not part of that series. You can tell by the settings in game one, they've come up with Team Islands, which I guess all of these games, of which there are four, I think they were played on four random. And we can see that this isn't quite the strongest Chinese team that you could think of. Um, notable absentees like Love Cheng and Yo in particular. Um, but it is, uh, these players will all be kind of in the picture for. Uh, Chinese teams in national tournaments and in clan tournaments indeed some men, at least some of them I think possibly three maybe even four would play for an SY team because I think Moonlight is SY although he is not wearing his tag in this game um, so they are still nevertheless preparing for the upcoming team game to tournament that's on the horizon uh, seeking to play other strong teams in rated games as well as in that more those more sorts of prize money exhibition series um, they also played Germany in one game the other day in a 3v3 which along with this set of games are available for download at on AOC zone but anyway enough waffling let's have a look at the actual game itself we see the Chinese have got the Northern Ireland um, just briefly look at the players uh, looks like they went team random civilizations most likely looking at the picks so we got a couple of very strong water sieves here in Vikings uh, played by Paladin on the right flank and uh, Saracens played by VG Longstand next to him in kind of pocket position, although um, the pockets and flanks are kind of you know not as crucial in terms of matchups and stuff as it might be on something like Arabia, for example, or even Standard Islands. Um, rounding out the civilization lineup for the Chinese team, we've got Q in the orange, and we've got. Moonlight, who is better known as PBTD, I recently found out, or recently had it confirmed, because I thought it was for a while, but wasn't sure, but I'm sure I read that again the other day. Uh, Moonlight in the red, playing as the Turks, and that's PBTD. Um, for the Chinese team, we've got Mango, playing as Goths on the left flank in the teal. Uh, next to him, we've got Exit, playing as Saracens in green, and Error playing in blue as the Turks and then on the right flank facing off against Paladin we've got CZ Skull um, in the, as the Vikings so that's interesting we've got both Viking players uh, really close to each other on facing off directly against each other on the right side but interestingly um, Skull has decided to place his dock kind of off towards the side of the map so in a kind of sheltered location and it won't be a race for the uptime uh, between Paladin and Skull right on the front so it looks like Chinese went with two forward docks and then two side docks on the left hand side. Won't be surprised in this case to see red going with more of a kind of fish boomy fast castle approach considering how sheltered he's going to be. Um, Q will be protecting the approach to his fishing area so maybe we'll see that from him. Um, for CZ, for something I do want to point out which they don't seem to have taken advantage of just yet is this ridiculous area of water that is actually in 
in, like entirely enclosed on their island, like a watery enclave. Um, you sometimes see these in team islands. I mean, you got one over here for the Chinese team, but this one for CZ, I don't I'm sure I've ever seen one this crazy. Like the amount of private deep fishing they could have here is astonishing, and I would be surprised once they f figure out just how good this is if they don't actually put a dock here later on for some free fishing. But anyway, taking a look at the dock positions, we can see Error docking right in the back corner. Uh, so potential fish boom going to go on for him and maybe more of a fast castle approach as well. So perhaps we'll see that from both Turks players, that being blue and red. And then the other two Czech players docking off towards the left corner. Again, in quite a sheltered position, so more of a back dock approach for CZ, whereas the Chinese being more aggressive with their dock placement. Pig Ben is in the chat asking in a hypothetical Nations Cup Norway's Viper NBL and what else? Well, they will be lucky to even have the Viper if they play another Nations Cup. Um, seems to be kind of AFK at the moment. So it's up to NBL to be the new Viper. <laughs> they have Lecture, of course, the mighty Lecture. <laughs> uh, so in terms of players advancing to the feudal age, it seems everyone is going up except error so uh, looking like he's going to go with more of that uh, fast castle type approach potentially um, still in the dark age and no click up for him skull's going to be first up to the feudal age on this flank um, going to be beating paladin by about 50 seconds which um, would be enough time to get a galley or two out so uh, you have to say that like okay it's it's great it's fine that he went on the side but just just imagine that he had docked on the front um, Paladin will be all kinds of in all kinds of trouble with a 50 second difference in up time between him and the player that he's opposing especially when they are Vikings but everybody else more or less hitting the feudal age now uh, let's have a look at Skull to see if he's got three dogs already so as expected from Viking flank player on an island type map going to be going for heavy fast rush and we'll more or less see the same thing coming out from Paladin I would have thought looks like for now though he's only placed two docks probably just about goes to build the, build the third right now left flank for CZ three docks already as well left flank for China so we're at least going to see all, th all of the flanks doing a heavy grush right now red just on the two docks at the moment and error on his way to Castellade with, as we expected to see, a pretty heavy fish boom going on there. It's on the way, well, on the way to the feudal age, but we'll be aiming for more of a fast castle approach, is what I was meant to say. I think I just accidentally said he was on the way to, cast on the, way to the castle age. So Paladin moving around with a few of his galleys, looking for targets, but uh, not really finding anything to attack at this point. Um, just seeing one of Skull's kind of scouting galleys but no idea where his opponents have docked at this point and just massing to kind of protect his fish for a little while on the left hand side we don't really see much in the way of galley action either although Q is now in the orange is now sending a couple of his galleys forward when he, where he's going to run into three from Mango if they are uh, paying attention or patrolling um, in fact, Mango might be able to get a couple of nice hits on Q's galleys as they retreat there, but turning away just at the right angle and just in time. And this is one of the first more aggressive moves now we see on the right hand side from Purple and Grey. Pushing out towards Skull, but only with a couple of galleys each, the rest of their galleys lagging behind. And that means Skull, even though he's facing off against two different colours here, can uh, force those guys back pretty easily. Um, big numbers advantage. Obviously he was first up, also um, with three and now four docks. And interestingly, we see Error going with coinage. So he's going to start slinging straight away with them and just fish boom the hell out, out of this middle lake as well. And then potentially sling, uh, I would expect Skull and maybe some others up to Castle Age faster than the players that they will be facing off against. Um, you see this telling us that Error has just sensed 600 food and 350 gold to skull which means that he'll be more or less able to click castle age um, within just a couple of minutes which is going to be pretty crazy strong when you're a vikings flank player on four docks 
um, and then probably clicking castle age by like minute 16 at, at this rate assuming that he's got the wood to build buildings um, we see a market coming down for him already has the blacksmith and indeed a little bit more food coming from his friend error and he'll be on the way to the castle age almost immediately with 14 galleys out that's going to be pretty strong um, oh, I'm looking at the place 16 actually I've got a new uh, overlay as well instead of dashboard and Aero also slinging Mango too so we're going to see both flanks for CZ being slung at this point um, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that works out for the moment Skull despite having a lot of galleys is still heavily heavily outnumbered by the combined forces of grey and purple on this right hand side here and can't take any kind of a fight and given that he's clicked up to the castle age as we see in the top right um, he'll probably be well advised to not take any uh, decisive fights at this point in time because he'll want to be preserving those galley numbers so that they can be turned into uh, war galleys as quickly as possible on the left, red and orange, they, we did see them move forward and have a bit of a skirmish with uh, teal and green, but largely quite passive over there. And I think the most interesting thing at the moment is to see how many uh, galleys Skull is able to keep alive by the time he hits the Castle Age and he's clicking those Castle Age upgrades. Exit in the green also receiving some sling from Eros. So Eros has now slung some resources at least to all three players and doing wheelbarrows and sticking around uh, in the feudal age to get a strong sling for much longer that indeed. Difficult thing for Skull right now is that um, Paladin and Longsan uh, kind of sitting on top of his docks may well be able to take out one, one or so dock and of these docks in the near future and um, you know that's going to be an issue depending on where Pat, sorry, Skull chooses to research that war galley upgrade from but also it makes it kind of difficult for him to group up his galleys and get um, like it, they're cutting off his reinforcement line basically and although you know Skull could then mass up some in this area and then kind of pincer them especially once he gets the war galley upgrade it means that uh, for now Skull will be kind of continuing to run away down here struggling to uh, stay alive against these two armies which combine into a very large navy indeed that are trying to hunt him down take him out before he gets his castle age upgrades but also eventually move on to Eris Fish in the bottom corner of the map left hand side we can see pretty big engagement coming in over here as we see four sizable armies all coming together um, not a lot of micro going on here besides the odd runner um, both navies just actually standing and fighting and um, you can see both sides losing some galleys there but nothing really decisive here Skull has got his upgrades but uh, it seems that Paladin and Longsand are still going to move in against these war galleys and actually um, the feudal galleys being slightly faster they continue to hunt them down because they've Despite the technological difference, they've probably still got the numbers to take this fight as long as they can make uh, Skull kind of stand and take the fight. It will become a little bit more difficult if he's microing away with the ballistics that's going to be kicking in. Um, meanwhile on the front, Skull doing his best with his other group of galleys that have come out of his docks to kind of um, prevent any further reinforcements coming down the right hand channel on the, of the map. And given that Skull did remass quite handily over here, uh, once Purple and Grey moved away from his docks, he might be able to get a really nice pincer now. Because he's got enough galleys in the right, although they are kind of split into different groups, to make Purple and Grey think twice about just diving straight past them and getting out of there. Especially with the ballistics involved. Uh, now he might actually get a pretty nice patrol uh, that will pincer them. Uh, especially if he was bringing the other galleys that he has up here into play but that's not happening at the moment and looks like grey and purple are just kind of micro out of, like pick up some galleys with micro as they make their way out and not get too trapped in by Skull who probably end up losing these four as well as the these are the purple and grey galleys retreat left hand side still nothing too aggressive happening both
name is for the two players on each team just kind of patrolling defensively after they did move in and take a little bit of a fight. You see that it's kind of 55 or so galleys compared to around 54 Czech teams. So really even on the left it's going to be difficult to see who might take a fight if they choose to engage except for possibly the fact that Orange uh, a little bit late to Castle Age and a little bit obviously going to be late with War Galley and Ballistics and stuff like that which will make it easier for um, Teal and Green to take that on the right on the left sorry actually and interestingly Skull continuing to receive the majority of the sling from Aero no doubt it's now on his way to the Imperial Age and once he gets Galleon Bracer, Chemistry, all of those kicking in it's going to be really really tough for um, for purple and grey to actually take any fights against them. I mean, they're only just getting a war galley and bogkin arrow, and they're face going to be facing off an opponent who's getting slung and being in the Imperial Age with all of those technologies that I talked about available to him. Really far behind Skull in terms of game state, and it seems likely that he'll be able to win a fight 1v2 on the right-hand side with the benefit of that sling that he's receiving. And on the left... China just being forced further and further back. Q is still not reaching the Castle Age just yet, still on normal galleys, and that means that with two uh, war galley neighbors pushing against their docks on the left hand side, uh, they can pretty much just force China away, maybe take away some fishing, destroy some docks. On the right, Skull skirmishing a little bit with his opponents, but not really committing to it, which um, there's obviously no sense in doing so when he's about to hit the Imperial Age, and now he'll be clicking Galleon, Bracer and Chemistry, and really taking the fight to his opponents at that point. Orange hitting the Castle Age, and now getting the Castle Age upgrades in, but at this point, uh, CZ have basically advanced down the entire left flank of the map, completely pushed them away from uh, their fishing. We can see the red fishing ships fleeing here, but also, um, you know, it just means that production is taken away in terms of actually reinforcing that army on the top side for China because the CZ galleys are now sitting in between the uh, navy and the docks of. The Chinese player and CZ can therefore kind of cut off the reinforcement lines, destroy some docks, make it really difficult for the Chinese players to mass up. On the right, Skull now with Galleons and Bracer done, not yet chemistry, but still that makes his ship so much more powerful than the Navy that it is of the opposing players, and he's really able to take this fight now. And uh, Grey and Purple are just fleeing at this point. as are Orange and Red who are, have continued to retreat almost the entire way around the island and you know, if they carry on going clockwise around it then they'll end up meeting up with, <laughs> with Paladin and Longsan and Maeve and uh, Pinsa and Skull potentially but to be honest it seems like their main priority now is not going to be to continue to flee but actually to turn and take the fight. Um, the thing is that they were waiting for those upgrades to kick in for Orange and seems like they got a better patrol in on this because uh, the CZ players were giving chase and you always have a bit of a defender's advantage on water if you're the one kind of running away and then turning and fighting you can usually get a better patrol out of that and also like whilst CZ had the technological advantage for a while before Orange upgraded his galleys didn't necessarily have the numbers advantage to be chasing down the Chinese players Nonetheless, Skull has completely taken control of this front area now, and we see a similar situation uh, as before, where the Chinese players are cut off from, like their main navies are cut off from their line of reinforcement from their docks. But I feel like what they might be trying to do is head around to the left and completely pincer these armies, the, these navies of uh, teal and green. If they were to kind of move around the left hand side and 4v2 teal and green, that would take the majority of the military off the water for um, CZ at this point. and could work out to be a really nice play if they can pull it off. But really like military numbers are lacking quite a lot for um, some of the players on this 
in this match actually. See purple with just eight at this point. Um, and teal with just six. So it's really more a case of Paladin coming over here to uh, help really decide the fight against green potentially if they manage to get the positioning right. But not really happening. Um, and I don't know how much that's actually going to pay off for them because what purple and grey vacating this area has done has allowed CZ Skull to take and the yellow to take just complete control of the middle water uh, and kind of lay siege to the docks of purple and grey but also like um, seizing the opportunity to kind of move unhindered through the middle channel is now able to reinforce on the left hand side as well. Um, we see a kind of sneaky landing that's happened here. Uh, Red is the one who's landed villages on Teal's Island, but Teal, lots of buildings here, um, presumably with Town Watch as well. We can see Skull also has is getting that, so sees there with lots of line of sight on their island, but also all the buildings on the water, just making it so easy to see that landing. Um, so immediately nipped in the bud there. Purple's few remaining galleys now being picked off and completely trapped in the left corner. Um, green is going to complete the pincer there and Skull will uh, decide that Purple has been wiped out enough and he's going to turn his attentions to probably advancing down the left hand ch channel here and taking on the combined forces of Orange and Red although given the they do have impressive numbers in this area that may not turn about to be the best fight for him we'll have to see if he takes it or not but instead looks like he's going to sit on the docks actually and just take out some production facilities on the right hand side he's been completely able to mop up most of grey and purple's docks here so going to be really difficult for purple in particular to remass um, galley numbers at all Paladin though trying to redock on the back to um, boost his production and Imperial Age also being researched for him as well so he will be the first player from the Chinese team on the way to the Imperial Age I'm not sure if that's going to be able to be enough though for the Chinese team because on the left hand side we can see that um, exit and the green is pushed out with this other half of Skull's army and is now completely laying waste to the docks of red and orange and right now I just think in terms of actual number of docks on the map China just don't have very many um, so their production is just so uh, hindered at this point um, although Paladin building an impressive number on the back I just don't see them being able to remass enough of galleys at this point um, and taking advantage of their naval superiority we now see a landing coming out from Mango uh, dropping a castle as the Goths and also barracks um, in a really nice spot because it's taking away the gold pile for Q who's also running low on this gold and that's going to really hurt, his, hurt him in the kind of medium term hurt his ability to fight back Error in the blue just getting horse collar. I was just checking to see how many farms he'd actually had up to this point, but um, he'd been using, hadn't been having any food production on land. He'd been completely fish booming, but now starting to add in some farms, so that's why he's only now getting horse collar. Um, on the back, Paladin massing quite, remassing quite impressively here, and looking to meet up with orange and red. So a lot of galleys, in fact, all basically all of China's military. All of China's navy is concentrated on the back of their island here and you've got to think they're massing to do some kind of decisive push on either one side or the other but whilst they kind of vacate, completely vacate the front of their island and have no naval presence there whatsoever the CZ team is taking advantage of their kind of room to breathe by landing with the Goths here and I think Mango is going to be able to have a very uh, effective landing here, he's got multiple barracks um, Castle is up to enable him to do those upgrades to get uh, production of Huskiles at the barracks and faster production. And I really don't see how Q is not going to be wiped out pretty much instantly by a flood of Huskiles or perhaps something else um, pretty quickly. 
we even see saw that Skull is getting up trade on their island. So I think Seasides Island is really nice for doing trade. It's pretty much almost a corner to a corner, apart from like kind of 10, 15 percent of the map on each side. Um, so that trade will actually work out pretty well for them. Obviously, trades generally fairly viable on team islands as long as you've got the water control to stop it being picked off from kind of one corner or one end of your island. Q and the orange colour on the way to the Imperial Age along with Moonlight who's going to hit, hit, hit the Imperial Age just ahead of him so we're going to see these three players with large navies for the Chinese team um, all getting Galleon and stuff like that uh, and then looking to take a decisive fight on the water or so they hope but um, in the meantime Orange is being more or less wiped out and he's had to basically vacate his entire um, base at this point and just run uh, doing some stone walls as well but we'll need to actually seal off the entire island and not forget this segment here in order for those to be effective um, also needing to wall here as well really Yeah, Error was slinging basically everyone on the CZ team. Uh, he was mainly slinging yellow, but he did give some sling to Mango as well, quite a significant amount, and then also um, a little bit to Exit as well. So finally we see China uh, taking that engagement on the against CZ on the kind of backside of their island, the one that they've been um, massing to take for quite some time now, but I think don't even know if they were really ready for it. It was kind of forced on them by the CZ team probing around the back of the island, wondering, probably wondering where China's navy had actually gone, considering, uh, you know, the, that's the only front that they were concentrating on because they weren't landing or anything like that. See, on the right hand side, Skull has also landed together with Mango, actually. A couple of barracks here for Mango as well, so they're going to be something of a goth flood. Uh, backed up by siege rams from the Viking player on the right hand side. So Paladin's base looking very much under threat from Goth infantry and Viking siege rams. Um, and on the water for him, not looking too great having to retreat from Skull. And then on the left hand side, there's really no way for the Chinese Navy to push out uh, here either, because as long as Skull doesn't kind of waste half his galleys there, um, Paladin and Q probably wouldn't get out as long as Skull was backed up by Exit but they're kind of split up now so maybe Chinese will maybe find a way to bust their way out on the water here. I see Era still continuing to sling uh, but now directing some of that towards Mango um, to enable him to kind of flood Huskar sending more food and gold and we see that those are elite Huskars pretty much all over China's island now at this point if we look here we can see that Teal is dots crawling over the Chinese island like a rash now. Uh, Mango has landed barracks in lots of different places and he's just flooding, backed up by the sling. Um, and I don't know what answer the Chinese have got to this to this really. I mean, a couple of monasteries coming out, a few monks, obviously monks are a decent uh, way of defending against Huskars as long as the flood isn't too great, but Mango does have a flood uh, of Huskars and the flood may well be too great, especially if there's not that many monks here. And the other problem with that obviously is lack of mobility. The Chinese economies spread all over this island and the Huskars are really able to kind of spread out and hunt the uh, villagers down, whereas monks, a little bit more of a static defense, not able to chase after the Huskars and convert them uh, due to their lack of speed. And it's looking like CZ are gonna play in this game very, very decisively here. In fact, even as I say that, we see the GG coming in. So I think just better play on water overall. Um, you know the CZ players. I think they picked a good strategy with Error Fish booming uh, with the kind of deep pocket position that he had, and also the private lake, which he did take advantage of and completely flish out, even adding fish traps. Um, slinging the Viking player worked out really well. All the Chinese players played more or less standard, um, and the flanks in particular for CZ were able to. Uh, be very much in control of the water when backed up by the sling and the earlier kind of age up times and better masses of unit of ships that they were able to create whilst receiving that sling. 
if there's anything interesting in the statistics obviously a good ratio for um, skull because he's uh, sorry I was, I was my attention was taken by something else on my computer then yeah good ratio for skull because he was generally at, at a technological advantage or a numbers advantage in most of the fights that he took in that game also raising a lot of buildings with kind of the, the siege rams that he landed with um, as well as destroying a lot of docks and such from the shore um, kill to death ratio is not looking too great for the Chinese players really especially uh, VG Longsan in the purple who uh, t lost a lot of his ships on water and then had most of his economy raided likewise Q with most of his villagers dying at one point um, in fact I don't think only Moonlight with a positive kill to death ratio so there's no surprise that they actually lost on the water as heavily as they did and score with a really impressive 119 largest army and Mango not far behind so really great performance by CZ on the water there I think Islands is considered like CZ would consider Islands to be one of their best maps so no surprise that they took uh, Team Islands very decisively they get there against the Chinese team who aren't traditionally considered to be as strong on water as they are on, for example, Arabia. Right, score updated. We can just dive straight into the second game here because um, these are recorded games, as I said. Let me just get it loaded up. I don't know what the second map is, but I'm pretty sure they played all full random in this set, I think, because looking at the different maps originally when I downloaded the recorded games. So let's have a look which one this one was. I'm not sure I've actually got them in the right order at this point, uh, in the order that they were played, but it matters not. Okay, this looks like an oasis to me. Indeed, yeah. So, this is going to be interesting. It's not something that you see too often at the highest level. Um, it tends to be a map which you see play aid and being more popular amongst lower level players. Um, so, and you know, it's not something that really finds its way into map packs that often. So, this is going to be interesting to see this. Um, obviously sometimes you can see play it just like heavy walling on each side and then it becomes very much a kind of a slog, a real pitched battle um, and a war of attrition and those can lead to long kind of static games but we'll have to see um, you can also, also do some kind of like sneaks into the corners and stuff which can work out pretty nicely although obviously sometimes you've got a lot of enemy scouts patrolling around the corners looking for sheep as well so uh, that could Particularly a potential counter to that strategy. But anyway, let's have a look at players and civilizations. We can see the lineups in terms of players are more or less the same for the two teams. The only difference here is that VG Longsan has been subbed out and we now have SY Lix coming in. Um, very strong player. I'm not sure uh, which of those two players would be considered the strongest. I've got a feeling it might be Lix, um, but really, I, I don't know if it's going to be like there's a massive differential there for that to be really decisive uh, checking out the kind of civ positions we've got byzantine flank played by arrow in the blue uh, his pocket uh, mango is persians in the teal and then other pocket for cz exit aztec pocket in the green and the top flank for cz is skull japanese flank in the yellow the Chinese have Persian flank played by Q in orange, uh, Moonlight or PBTD in purple playing as Byzantine pocket to Q. Um, on the other side, Paladin with Japanese pocket and in the grey and Licks rounding out the player lineup in the red as Aztec. So let's see if there's any kind of advantage in that. I do like. Um, Aztec flank for the Chinese team as, as opposed to pocket because I don't know if kind of booming into eagles as a pocket for example would be as strong as it could be on something like Arabia um, and Aztecs on the flank 
would be more able to you know either take a like do a rush or maybe a smash or something like that um, and then I think I was right in saying Persians in the pocket for um, CZ is yep that's mango and the teal so we're going to be in a nice position um, to potentially do a really nice Persian boom in the pocket whereas the Persian player for the Chinese team may come under a little bit more th pressure as the flanks so sip positions I think there's like positives and negatives for both teams there um, it's not mirrored so that could be a potentially an interesting dynamic but we'll have to see um, just having a look in the corner and see if all the extra sheep have been taken we see a couple of scouts uh, in the north and south corners trying to find them um, so actually purple has also taken all of the extra sheep from the left corner so um, players trying to take advantage of all the extra sheep that are on Oasis there um, we see X is coming out for error here which can only mean that he's intending to wall across there um, I guess the only other possibility judging by the location of the X's could be a flaring walls for some reason in case somebody's gonna sneak but I don't think that's gonna happen um, okay I just heard a bore and then I was thinking is there a steel coming in somewhere um, but that's not the case gonna take a look at how things are shaping up for Arrow. It looks like he hasn't made a lumber camp at this point, which is, oh no, it's here. <laughs> Maybe, I'm going to be completely blind. Yeah, just doing one small one here and then he'll move to the middle, um, but not going to, he, he's got four on wood, but I don't think we're going to see any kind of drush by him because he's completely walling. And actually, this is interesting. Um, Lex has come out and seen this spot that Arrow had chosen to wall. Uh, and seen, oh this is a good choke point for me to wall as well, but he's actually dropped a barracks right in the middle of Error's walls, which will force Error to wall just behind. But if Error does manage to get that wall up, then it's going to make drushing, uh, which seemed to be on Lix's mind, a little bit pointless. So, um, this barracks may not be kind of as, as effective as it could have been, or effectively placed. We'll have to see. Scout going down for Mango. They're just getting into the fight, but none of them on low health here. Uh, looks like Error gonna lose his scout as well, which will leave the two Chinese players with two scouts here to fight back against the villagers. But there's on both on low HP and with Paladin losing his as well. So um, Lix has one villager free and loose inside the CZ lines or behind the CZ lines, um, but that one will be chased after by Eris Villager and I doubt that Eris Villager will let that go. The only thing is that that female villager is on low HP but Error recognising that has brought another villager into the fight and he's going to hunt down that villager with two of his own um, to make sure that she doesn't uh, escape his clutches and do any kind of sneak a bit later on. So Lix did drush, at least with one militia. I'll actually switch to his point of view, see if he's doing any more. Uh, just the one for now, actually, to apply some pressure to Eris' walls and potentially force him to either be dropping houses or constantly repairing or continually re-walling behind. <laughs> that one villager for Lix in its attempt to get away uh, has blundered into Mango's lumber camp and will now be set about by one of the teal villagers as well. Um, and it's kind of unfortunate because that might have been um, her moment to escape from the clutches of Error's two villages that were chasing considering they ran into a wolf and had to deal with that um, but no luck for her and she's now doubling back towards Error's base where most certainly going to be uh, picked up and most likely killed because I can't imagine Error's going to let him let her wander around um, anywhere near his base especially if like if he were to stop following her then probably we see a tower coming up from somewhere and maybe some sneak uh, buildings as well, sneak archery range, a tower on the woods, something like that. So it's of the utmost importance that he just keeps chasing it and that's why he's been using two villagers to chase one villager this whole time. So Drush from Skull did actually manage to stop uh, Q from 
finishing his wall and he actually should pick actually no that militia going down so it looks like this villager on one HP will survive that hasn't worked out uh, as optimally as it could for Skull there um, but this rush doing really nice damage at this point because it um, has forced Q into idling a total of uh, well I think at least four or five villagers to in order to make sure they get, he gets his wall off but now the drush is inside as well it could continue to inflict yet more idle time so this drush I'd say has really paid off for Skull um, wonder if he's going to complete like go for a complete wall off behind that he's continuing to wall across here for now um, it's going to be a long way for him to wall to the edge of the map but we'll see if he goes for it drush going to move in on the berries but won't have enough HP to pick up a villager kill or shouldn't as long as Q is paying attention <laughs> and somehow Lix's villager is still alive uh, on 4 HP and now being chased by just the one injured villager of uh, error. I wonder how that one got down to 4 HP and then um, like survived the fight and got free again interesting kind of palisade here as well look like I don't know if Lix is managing trying to seal himself or seal his villager into the forest but it's next to a tree so I don't know what that's all about really um, stone coming well stone being mined by error so I guess we're gonna see uh, some Byzantine stone walls across the front here uh, numerous villages coming out to do that actually and they're probably transitioning into a bit of a boom as well um, and unless Lix goes for like a really heavy smash I don't think he'll have too much luck going aggressively there left hand side Q completely walled up and um, Skull signalling his intention to completely wall himself off as well so we're gonna see a kind of completely walled off game on both sides as I was kind of uh, predicting and saying at the start of the game um, I hope we'll see some uh, Castle Age aggression coming out from somebody, but there is the potential that this turns into something of a boom oriented game. So, Moonlight first to the Castle Age for the Chinese team is the Byzantines dropping at TC straight away. Um, do we see another one coming out somewhere? Those are just some spare sheep that he's mopping up. No instant 3TC to start with, which is kind of surprising. Um, kind of take a look at his resources. I, uh, it just seems like he was lacking five stone. We may see another one. Yeah, the moment he got the stone, um, then he's immediately dropping that extra TC. I think Lix's Sneakville. Legend, judging by the lack of a red dot wandering around behind the CZ lines it has now been killed um, so he didn't manage she didn't manage to escape her his clutches and do some sneak which sneak attack which would have been cool because ever is just gonna walk across the front of here for absolutely forever and that's gonna keep Lex out for a long time however He's doing what we wanted him to do. It's gonna be he's dropping that siege workshop, dropping a monastery, so he's gonna go for a smash as Aztecs and Byzantine's obviously a pretty decent sieve to defend against that, but let's hope Lix can really kind of go aggressive and force the issue here and make sure this doesn't turn into a completely passive game. Um this is kind of interesting for Skull doing up five or so archers here. I'm I mean, it's too late to check now, but I would have liked to see when he was making those archers in the archery range if he was um, aware of just how extensively Q had walled off and whether he would be able to get in. Because really, unless he comes over here in the castle age with some siege and starts knocking on the door, those archers will achieve precisely nothing. Um, so I'm going to guess he just hadn't scouted the extent to which Q had walled off when he decided to go with those archers. Uh, Lix with the Manganel preventing error for completely finishing his second layer of wall over here. Um, looks like error, considering that he has jumped straight back onto stone with a bunch more bills. Um, 
may well go for a castle to defend against Lix's smush, which is always a great reply to when an enemy player is siege and monk rushing you. Um, a castle kind of here, I mean, he could even get it on the hill, but I don't even know if that's really necessary and whether it would end up not really covering both sides as well as it could. But in fact, given that he's peeled quite a lot of villagers off stone, um, and made them begin to kind of rewar uh, very, very extensively and hurriedly behind his original layer of walls. He may not be getting that castle at all or anytime soon, at least. Um, although he's going back now, so we're getting fortified walls straight away, and those fortified walls now are sitting with 3,900 HP. So taking an absolute age to get through, especially when there are two layers. Um, we see Paladin. His Japanese pocket went a few nights to kind of solidify this push by Lynx, but they won't be able to do anything until Lynx has managed to break through the wall and Errors kind of quite happily continue to re-wall behind that. Um, done a siege workshop, so I wonder if he'll just pop out a mangonel um, of his own to, yeah, he's just do, now doing that to kind of push that ram of Lynx's away from the wall at least. Gonna have to be careful not to get it converted by uh, Lynx's monk, because I think we saw Redemption kicking in for him. Um, already. Uh, you can see one monk tech is definitely done, judging by the HP increase, but now we see Ever really going straight onto that stone pile heavily, so that he's going to be able to get that castle sooner rather than later. I assume he'll just come up here and that will more or less protect both sides. Um, with a little bit of stone walling across here, that will basically put an end to aggression by Lix now, I should think. Checking out. Hang on. You hear a siege weapon, yeah. Lix roving right up to the wall to try and make keep that mangonel away. Obviously, the monk with nine range significantly outrages the mangonel and kind of makes it difficult for the mangonel to come in range and get pot shots on from the rams. Apart from the fact that the ram is kind of in this alcove of the wall, but I was gonna I was going to take a look at the pocket to see how Mango's boom was going, but we can see 66 villagers for him as Persians, 64 exit as Aztecs in the pocket so both players booming nicely in the pocket positions for CZ. Chinese players a little bit behind on boom obviously they on the right hand side we see both players going for a much more aggressive approach only really um, moonlight and the purple kind of keeping up with the booming of the um, of the CZ players. Uh, I think Lix has kind of broken through these walls a little bit quicker than Error was prepared for, he's had to kind of fall back a little bit and place that castle a little bit further back than he probably would have liked to, I'd assume he would have liked to have got it here and here, even with part of its foundation on the hill to get the hill bonus, but um, Lix is through the walls and forcing him away and he's had to do the castle further back to be out, range, out of range of the monks. Um, all of this will of course deny Lix from pushing through here so he's gonna have to divert either to the right or to the left so probably see some more rewarding coming out um, on the right and left sides here. Uh, Mango is flaring this area like crazy so I wonder if he's planning on dropping military buildings there to come and support um, Error in the near future we'll have to see. Left hand side those five arches for Skull just keeping a line of sight over what Q might be doing in front of his walls, but otherwise, nothing really going on. Skull just happily booming away, Q booming away, and so everything is concentrated on this right hand side where Lix is just running into stone wall after stone wall. There's someone in the chat saying he deleted the converted workshop. Yeah, I think error had re I think maybe it was open, or he thought it was open so he could run through. That's the only thing I can think as to why he did that. Um, I did think that this the workshop had been incorporated into part of the walls. I'm struggling to remember if Lix if error sorry had already rewalled behind it. But I think originally it was at least part of the walls. Um, But I think Lix needs to um, get a move on here because Aztecs really struggle against Byzantines in the Imperial Age. But the, at least for, for him, like because 
Arrow is mining so much gold and kind of being forced to, sorry, not mining so much gold, mining so much stone and being forced to retreat, he's not really booming up, he's not really getting into the situation uh, where a Byzantine can be supremely dangerous to an Aztec, which is in the post-imperial age when they've got lots of resources and um, elite cataphract pretty much wrecks everything that the Aztecs have. Um, we won't be seeing error in that kind of stage of the game for a very very long time indeed now um, only now dropping a second and a third town center and continuing to mine an absolute ton of stones so uh, gonna be lucky potentially for a second castle to really seal out this smush of uh, licks and paladins knights and we see that actually licks beat um, error to two TCs um, now dropping a third as well so actually now that second TC may have been around the same time as this one was going up but even so like Lix keeping up with error on the villager numbers so he's not going to find his Byzantine opponent getting well ahead of him at any point on the left hand side we see Teal coming out here uh, with some villagers um, I wonder if he's going to join um, skull and trying to push the left hand side so bringing the Persians to fight with the Japanese over here it seems like that is the case because uh, the CZ team have decided that the best way to deal with this aggression that's coming in uh, from the Chinese Aztec player um, is to send their own Aztec player over here who has been booming uh, to and has already reached the Imperial Age to come over here uh, with Elite Eagles and completely clean all of this up and they'll do very very well against the Castle Age Knights as well if they manage to engage uh, before those become uh, get any more upgrades or anything like that although to be honest like Paladin given that he's a Japanese uh, may not be sinking too much into the night line anyway to you know not really upgrading Cavalier and extra blacksmith upgrades etc For Pallium, actually, we don't really see anything besides the uh, boom that he transitioned into after initially doing a few nights. Um, they were doing a gate here to try and let Exit's Eagles out, and we will see all of those Eagles now flood out through the... Well, through Ewa's gate and now through this gap in the wall. Paladin is building a gate here to uh, try and control access through there. But the problem is that given that the villagers building the gates and the knights can't run through there, they're now being attacked by the elite eagle warriors. So those are knights with just forging versus elite eagle warriors with uh, all the blacksmith's armor gra grades done. That's uh, not really a fair fight. And all of those knights are going to die and become non-factors in this game now. So Paladin will most likely transition into something else uh, in the Imperial Age, considering he is the Japanese and the night line not really viable for the Japanese. Paladin's now locked that gate, doesn't want any eagles accidentally flooding through. It only takes one eagle straying under the gate for to hold the gate open and let all the rest in. Um, here we see uh, Exit has managed to track down all of the monks of Lix, so that's going to put an end to the smush as well. Some of them may get converted here, but Lix's mangonel is not helping by uh, trying to hit Exit's eagles and in the process taking out half of the HP of the monks, which meant they couldn't stay alive long enough to get any conversions off. Left hand side, Mango pushing with Cavaliers now, Skull with some Mangonels, Crossbows and even Monks and that was a, potentially going to be a really nice move for him, uh, Redemption Monks converting the buildings that form part of Q's wall, but the castle has appeared behind those buildings so not really working out too much to Skull's advantage to have converted those um, buildings and deleted them, especially if he only got Redemption for that purpose, although you know obviously going forward later in the game if he does keep a decent complement of monks then having redemption is going to be so so handy to convert siege weapons right hand side Chinese players did a decent job of seeing the exit out so don't really see his equals very active on the right and given that the Chinese players are now completely walling up over there we may see more of the action transition to the left hand side where CZ are now mounting a fairly decent push against the Chinese 
Um, ultimately, it's still only a couple of mangonels to break through, um, so taking a while, although they are starting to make some holes now, and Manco's cavaliers can finally have access to the farmland of Q. They'll be met by a few elite cataphracts already from Moonlight. Always love to see those in, in the fray, and backed up by cavaliers for uh, Q as well in the orange, so that's going to be elite cataphracts and uh, eventually paladins on the left hand side for the Chinese team and that's going to work out pretty well um, over here probably on the right yeah exit is just retreating from here with his eagles there's going to be no more pushing over here the Chinese as I was saying just doing as many layers of walls now as Era originally was doing himself so Era will be able to just kind of safely boom get up into the Imperial Aging go Elite Cataphract himself um, and although Exit does have quite a bit of military production here and he's also dropping a castle um, it doesn't look like they really want to force the issue here and everything will more or less focus on the left hand side Cavaliers for both players in roughly equal numbers squaring off but Mango taking some fire from TC and also fighting against one or two cataphracts so probably not going to work out too well for him especially as we see a ton of uh, reinforcements coming in in terms of in the form of some more elite cataphracts from Moonlight and now I think Mango will be advised to get out of there he's taking fight against like under the fire of the castle and now Paladin upgrade King in for Q as well Mango really needs to retreat um, Managed to not lose too many Cavaliers there, although most of them will be on low HP. And at least that means they can now be healed up by the Monks of Skull. Um, Exits come over here, bring these Elite Eagle Warriors to try and do a 3v1 push over here. But they, I think they really need Siege at this point, both to get rid of this castle. Um, and also the Elite Eagle Warriors are not going to be the most effective thing over here due to the presence of the elite cataphracts from Moonlight as long as they've got uh, Logistica in particular they'll be just well they do so much damage to the elite eagles anyway but with Logistica they just become absolute killing machines so given that uh, we see a combined army of elite cataphracts and paladins over here from the Chinese players no surprise that Skull is dropping a ton of barracks, it's going to make Japanese halberdiers. Obviously they only get like a, a small bonus against the elite cataphracts but nonetheless they're still a very great cost effective option against the elite cataphracts and um, with the Japanese attack speed bonus as well they're very very good. Like Japanese halberds are so fantastic, like when, in any fight where cavalry are present they just shred them um, really disgustingly quickly. See trade getting up for both teams now, we can kind of see the line stretching across the map, but the Chinese have done that earlier. Um, we often see in 4v4 like Arabia's, the Chinese do quite like to take Spanish as their fourth trade sieve, um, get trade up pretty early and count on trade winning them in the late game, like winning them through in the late game. So no like surprise whenever you see them kind of beating their opponents to getting their trade line running even if they don't have Spanish um, it's just something you expect to see because it's just kind of seems to be uh, in their DNA of their Age of Empire strategies but for the most part it's turning into something of a or was turning into something of a passive game well not necessarily passive but just kind of stabilising but looks like we're going to see a renewal of action on the right hand side now um, whilst on the left hand side both teams kind of massing to to push or to attack and defend but uh, no decisive move being made just yet um, Paladins through this first layer of wars by Era gonna drop a castle here which is uh, kind of I mean I don't know why there would be but <laughs> it, it seemed a little bit close to Ever's, Ever's lines like they could even have been a cont for the host um, I think that's the first time I've heard this noise in all my time streaming. <laughs> uh, maybe I didn't have the right Twitch alert enabled until I started using this new OBS. But anyway, we're going to host. Um, 
I think that's the first time I've heard this noise in all my time streaming. <laughs> uh, maybe I didn't have the right Twitch alert enabled until I started using this new OBS. But anyway, we're going to see the really big engagement coming in on the left-hand side here between uh, masses of elite cataphracts and paladin for Moonlight and Q, and then um, lots more paladin, elite eagles, and Japanese halves and arbalests and monks, all from CZ Skull. Now I'm seeing a little bit of slowdown here. I'm just going to check my task manager uh, to see how my CPU is doing, but it's the slowdown is not down to CPU overload, so nothing wrong with the streaming settings at this point. Obviously, as I mentioned before, that I am I'm testing out some different streaming settings here. Uh, looking at using a slightly lower resolution, but one which will enable me to reduce the amount of blur that's on the screen, on the, like on the screen when you move the screen, by virtue of some special settings. So just keeping an eye on how that goes. So let me know as well if you see anything odd with the stream. But we can see this big fight has kind of played out whilst I've been checking the technical aspect of the stream, and it's gone more or less in the favour of the Chinese team. If, um, if this was more open now, they'd be racing through that gap and destroying all those trebuchets and actually um, Q deleting all those walls to try and get the Elite Cataphract to pile through the walls and destroy all the trebuchets. Um, I feel like Elite Cataphract would, would have been really decisive there. Obviously, Paladins for each team, but Elite Cataphracts kind of just stomping all over the infantry that Exit had sent there. Um, so, so powerful unit in that, on mass and especially against infantry like that. But on the right hand side, um, Paladin pushing pretty effectively against uh, Error who just wasn't ready for him. Um, backed up by a ton of monks from Lix now as well. And I feel like this is going to be just so difficult for uh, CZ to stop on this side. I mean, Exit is massing elite eagle warriors, but they're just like paper against elite samurai. Um, and kind of cataphracts starting to be massed up uh, by error and he does have elite didn't see whether he got logistica just yet but the problem is that samurai elite samurai do very very well against cataphracts as well they're kind of a bit of a glass cannon in that situation where both units are doing a lot of damage to each other but both taking a ton of damage as well i'm not sure how exactly the dynamic works out in terms of like uh numbers to of each unit to be a certain number of the other unit or cost effectiveness but certainly um Elite Samurai backed up by a ton of monks to get some conversions in, really decent uh, answer to Cataphracts I would have thought. But the Eagles coming in for exit and kind of whittling down along with the Samurai and also taking away a lot of the monks' conversion uh, faith, like faith ability, which will mean that potentially a kind of second wave charge by error into the Samurai could and the monks could work out much, much better than otherwise would, done, would have done. So I think a good decision here by uh, CZ to send Exit in the green player with all of his eagles first and then send the Elite Cataphracts in but still the Elite Samurai and the monks together getting in a couple of conversions shredding the other Cataphracts and although I was saying like that fight went better than it could have done um, or that the CZ players got the most out of that fight that they could hope for it's still more or less gone in the favour of the Chinese team and I'd say what we're looking at now is the Chinese team pushing on both sides of the map. Um, the combination of Elite Cataphracts and Pali on the left is still proving hard to stop. Um, and now that Exit has to devote basically all of his attention to trying to help out on the right, or at least until Mango tries to help out here, um, that means that it's gone from being a 3v2 on the left to a 2v2 uh, pretty much and I think Moonlight and Q are in a position to win that quite handily here. Long, in fact I think they'll be pushing very quickly indeed as long as they keep uh, some siege and trebs behind that to allow them to take out all of the buildings that have been massed up over here. Right hand side the Elite Samurai Monk combination now being augmented by some siege onages from the Aztec player Lix as well. Um, good numbers of trebs here as well from the Japanese player. Don't Paladin. Uh, don't know if you've got Cataparuto at this point. Uh, also maintaining good numbers of samurai, and there's just nothing Eagles can do against this. Um, I think that for 
the uh, CZ team to have a chance of holding this. They, you know, they, they need a lot, well, Era to be in a much better position because he's basically dead at this point, but they probably need some Paladins sent over here from Mango. They need a lot more Elite Chaos Effect. Um, and the answer to this might even be some kind of uh, ranged units to shoot at the, the Samurai and the Monks because at the moment, like, the units they're using to fight back against the Samurai in melee uh, really not working out, and then half of them being converted to get by the monks anyway. And whilst all that's going on, the siege for the Chinese teams just wiping out all the production facilities. And as I said, we've got a push kicking in on both sides of the map for uh, the Chinese team, and that's why CZ have realised that it's hopeless. So um, kind of looking at the map and realising that they they're not going to be able to win this and. You're not dragging it out any further so that makes it 1-1 in this series of games that we've been seeing good play by the Chinese I think mounting very effective um, pushes on both sides it was nice to see them like winning out on the right hand side after being the ones to be initially aggressive at, and CZ being very defensive over here um, and on the left hand side there was just one really big crucial engagement that the uh, Paladins and Elite Cataphracts for China came out on top of Quick look at the achievements before we back out. Error pretty much uh, like just getting whooped the whole game, basically uh, losing uh, all of his stuff and not really killing anything in return. So no surprise to see a kill to death ratio as bad as that one is. Um, Moonlight with his horde of elite cataphracts looking like the MVP on the left with a lot of kills there. I think those are the kind of main things that turned it because all players got a kind of boomed up to the Imperial Age with the arguable exception of error in the end. So. Um, like not really I think it was def decided more by military differential than anything rather than um, you know one player getting really ahead in the economy or stuff like that it was just some important fights being taken by China especially on the left uh, interesting to note the trade profits though some like large numbers just about favouring Chinese I think with more players on like 4 and 3k getting up slightly earlier but all players getting, you know, 130 plus, well, actually, you know, licks 119, but all into good numbers of villagers. It's just that for error in particular, it just came a little bit late, unable to fight back. I'm going to just take like a one, two minute break just to get a bit of a a respite from casting for a moment. Um, <laughs> smart is it just to SMP casting or someone else to you and somebody say, why would you need anyone else? Thank you very much for your support, Ice Cream. You've got to tell that Smarty to stop being mean. <laughs> right, I'm going to throw up some music and just go AFK for a minute or two, but I'll be back soon, guys, and do, do at least one more of these games, possibly two, because there are four games in the set total.